Good morning. Good morning. All right, how are you about it this morning? Kind of slow, slow this morning. Sound like Mother Bond, you there?
she's on, I don't know if she's needed or not, but she's on. Uh-huh. This is Johnson, are you on? Can you hear me? Must be needed. Here I asked uh, Mother Lewis to do the needle to us this morning, if she don't mind. God, 
about the day to day. Bless sick everywhere in rest homes and hospitals. All that will on their bed of affliction, God. And then, God, something might want to come this morning, God. And up. Because you're worthy to be praised. Clear our mind, God. That we keep a mind of worshiping you and praising your holy name. Inviting your glory, God, into the house. Have your way in this house this morning, God. In the name of Jesus. This prayer I lay before this morning. Amen. 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 Turn it over to our trustee, Miss Mo, and our son's community. Our son's community. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Our lesson for the day is from Zephaniah, third chapter, verses 14 through 20. And the subject is a fresh start. And I'm listening today, the children of Israel, they are in captivity as punishment for their disobedience and unrighteousness towards God. So Zephaniah, he introduces a whole new prophecy and judgment to motivate repentance. That, that repentance that will result in the promise of restoration. And he begins with verse 14. He said, he tells them, say, Sing, O daughters of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Be happy, O daughters of Jerusalem. For the Lord has removed his hand of judgment and scattered your enemies. And he said, the Lord himself, king of Israel, will live among you. And you won't have to fear evil in the moment. And he goes on to tell us that on that day, the announcement to Jerusalem will be, don't be afraid, and to Zion, don't let your hands grow weak. For the Lord your God is in the midst of you. He is a mighty Savior who will give victory. He will rejoice over you in great gladness. He will love you and ignite in you with his song. And he tells them, Zephaniah said, and the Lord said, I will gather you, I will gather your wounds and take away your reproach. And I will deal severely with all who have oppressed you. I will save the weak and helpless ones and bring together those who were chased away. He said, I will change their shame into praise. Everywhere that they have, everywhere that they have been put to shame. He said, I'll change that shame into praise. And then at the last verse, he said, at that time, I will gather you together and bring you home again and give you a good name among all the people of the earth. And they will praise you when I restore your fortunes. And then as we look at some of the things in this lesson, you know, people sometimes, people suffer consequences for the poor choices of others. Made. Sometimes from poor choices of a previous generation, sometimes it's poor choices that you made. Um, but, uh, <clears throat> is, is there, but is there any hope? What they're saying, is there any hope for reverse of this condition? And so where or who can a new generation find a fresh story? But the prophet Zephaniah promises that God takes away judgment and brings renewal. He proclaimed that they are the restoration when God's people share righteousness, justice, and peace. And, and, and from our beginning, you know, we have suffered because, suffered because there were those who thought we would suffer a third class citizen. Because of the color of our skin. We suffer from generation. Each one of those generations pass their hatred and stuff down to the next generation. And, and 
we all we have suffered from every generation for hundreds of years. We didn't get a fair chance at the start, and it still continues today. And the spiritual and religious leader, Zephaniah was targeting them. He was talking to them because they, they continued to violate God's standards. The prophet, the prophet was rude, and they showed disrespect to God. They were hypocrites, guilty of deceiving the people with their lies, pretending they were hearing from God. And you know, they, they, and they had turned away from God and refused to turn back. And we have to, when we have, that's where our discernment, our wisdom, and our guidance, and our asking God come in, because we have people like that now. They say they hear from God. God told me to tell you this, and God told me to tell you that. We don't know these people. We don't know where they came from. But I do believe that if God wanted them to tell us something, then God would speak to us so we could receive something. And he, <clears throat> definitely, I hope his warning would be bigger, would be, would bring them repentance. He hoped it would be enough to bring them into repentance before it was too late. And so many times in our churches, in particular, we invite different ones to speak or preach. And, and they give a great speech. They use big 26 letter words. They give, they give such a good impression. You, and you find out later they're not living any of it. Mm. And, and so, you know, I'm saying they can talk to you. They can impress you. And it sounds so good. But then <clears throat> you watch the fruit. And, and, and then, you know, then you got the hit and run evangelist. Hit for you, hit you for a few books and run about two or three nights and run. The TV preachers, and I'm saying God told them to ask you for a certain amount of money to be blessed, and you haven't heard a thing from God. God wants us to come. He has it now. We don't have to go to the to the priest or whatever. We can go to God directly. Ask God for guidance. Ask God for leadership. Ask God for discernment. <clears throat> and things like this, this is where our knowledge should come in. Our knowledge and discernment should kick in. You know, read his word. Pray. Meditate, meditate on so you would know what to do. Everything that shines is not gold. And everything that sparkle is not a diamond. And Jesus declared that those who enter the kingdom of heaven Go in not based on position or profession, but by loving obedience to the will of God. Jesus shows that doing church work <clears throat> is not the answer. Doing church work, prophesying in his name, casting out devils, and doing many wonderful works will not work. Performing ministry is not the answer. Simple obedience to God's will in our private life is the key. Jesus tells us in Matthew to be aware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but are really wolves. The prophet Zephaniah encouraged the people to shout for joy. And, and you know, it was like, how can we shout for joy? They had just seen the northern kingdom taken over by the Assyrians and feared they'd be next. He told them to go ahead and praise God because that judgment would not be a permanent condition. They had to face, because they had disobeyed God, they had been so disobedient to God, they they had to suffer some. They had to pay some. So he, but this and I said, that, that's not a permanent thing. So, and God going to move again with grace and mercy among his people, removing some of the hardships and replacing it with joy. God's judgment come to bring repentance and return to God. If the Israelites never got punished for anything, they would they would never turn to God. And the Zephaniah is saying this, this little stuff you're going through now, he said, that, that that's temporary. Then you don't have to worry about that. Because uh, um, just stop your crying, stop your whining. He said, 
but this is temporary. But you know why you're going through. And you know, we we are like Israel. You know, we sometimes you know find it hard to rejoice when we're going through. I mean, it's hard for you to rejoice sometimes when you're really going through some hard stuff. And we often say, "I will bless the Lord at all times, and His presence, His praise shall continually be in my mouth." We say, <clears throat> "But can, can we truly, deep in our hearts, are we really praising God and while we are while we are going through?" That's what God expects. That's what Jeff and I are telling the people. Say, I know you're going through it. You're going to have to go through it. You don't have a choice because you, you have been rebellious. You need to repent. This is something to vent you to repentance. This is not a prominent thing, and, and it won't last forever. So, so, you know, cheer up. Praise God for what's on the other side. And see, when we're going through stuff, the good thing now, we as Christians, we have read and we have prayed and we understand now that we're going to go through these things. And sometimes, you know, but we also know God's going to be right in there with us. So whatever comes up, God can take care of it because he's right in there with us. And I know sometimes we we say, I bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue to be in my mouth. And uh, we say, <clears throat> This is the day the Lord has made, and I will rejoice, and I will be glad and rejoice in it. But uh, that's true. But I'm saying when the trial comes, this is Israel. Israel is saying, like, whoa, me, I, I just don't understand. And, and we just, we, it's just so sad. We are, they are fearful of the Syrians because they've already taken the northern king. And, and they, they just really don't know what to do. But I'm saying, but definitely I tell them. Don't worry about it. Go on through the storm, because on the other side, it's going to be different. It's going to be different on the other side. And But we can we truly trust and obey him in those troubled times? It'd be hard sometimes, but we have to keep on keeping on. And, and one of the main points in this lesson is to, to talk about restoration and how God makes it restoration possible in spite of circumstances and conditions. I, you know, our nation needs the restoration that reminds us that all persons have value and the most vulnerable, the weak, the, the, the poor, uh, uh, they, they need protection. That's what now makes it clear. He said, now when the least are provided for, it, and it assures no one will be left behind. And restoration always bring, always involve a return to a set of values, to some prior condition that was beneficial, or the recovery of which provides meaning and purpose to a community. Restore, return, and for the United States to truly be the nation under God, that's going to require the restoration of the value and the worth of all persons. And regardless of their color, their gender, or the class. Now, when restoration comes, our nation will serve as an example of what the founders had in mind from the beginning. And move toward a just nation. We we'll have to do that with God's blessing. We will have to turn back to God, <clears throat> all nations. But we're talking about our nation. The United States, because we live here, and we have seen how we have, have left, we have left what we we were built on. No more prayer in the school. No more no more words of words that they call religious words in the workplace. Nothing, you know. But everything else is all right. Just don't bring up God, you know. So this is how far we have fallen. From generation to generation to generation. And the Israelites were just as bad. They, they would not, they, they would not worship God. They turned away from God. They didn't want nothing to do with them. They were doing their own thing. They were fair and all right. And that's the way it is with us. And in, in the, here in America, no matter what, uh, you know, ever, they're doing, the powers that be are doing their own thing. They don't, don't seem to be concerned about God at all. And they're taking, they have voted to take this out, voted to take that out. Anything that looks 
looks like pertain to God. They don't want anything to do with it and don't, don't want the country to have anything to do with it. But <clears throat> Zephaniah is just like Zephaniah is telling the Israelites. You know, y'all have gotten so far away from God. Every time he tried to move toward you, you move farther away. I said, uh, you know, the biggest problem with you, you rejected your relationship with God. And so many of uh, us in America has done the same thing. <clears throat> but, you know, uh, Zeph and I told him, said, uh, uh, even though you are out here, so even though you have done what you know, but you can be restored. God desired to restore you. He wants to gather this from all the places that you've been in exile. He wants to bring all of you back. He's got a home for you. He's going to bring you back to your own land, and you won't ever have to get off anymore. And then he said, you know, you know just like Jeff and I were telling them, God has blessed for us as well. In John 14, he says, he goes to prepare a place for us. And we are going to, and things are not going to be the way they are all the time. And in Revelation 21, he says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor cry, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. So you see, we got a good future too. And, and no matter what, <clears throat> no matter what happens, God is going to be there for us. We're going to have some trials. We are having them now. And we will continue to have them. Some people are having them worse than what we are having. But we all are going to go through some things. But it's like, like Neph and I were telling the Israelites. You see, you know, ever since for the last year or so, we read about Israel. Israel would do good so when they come out of trials and tribulation. They do good for a little while. And it's no time for they drift back into the old way. And and we are a lot like the Israelites. We we think to stay as they say sometimes behind the eight ball a lot. You know, you gotta look at it and see if God brought you through that, God can bring you through something else. But the thing is, do we want God or do we want just what He can give us? Do we worship the giver or are we going to worship just the gifts? And, and, and that's something that we have to think about. <clears throat> you just can't, you, you just can't turn them on and off when you want them. God doesn't work that way. And, and, but you, we got, like I said, we got God's going to prepare a place for us. The revelation tell us that a lot of this stuff we're dealing with, we won't have to deal with anymore. But it's not a free ride. That's the main thing. It's not a free ride, right? We have responsibilities to God, responsibility to God. You know, God gave us laws. He gave us guidelines to follow. And he does, and we are not exempt. He does not exempt us from trouble or discipline. But he does not abandon us in the times of trouble. We have to... <clears throat> We have to get into the manual. Uh-uh. We have to get into that God's operation manual. That's the word of God. We read this word of God, and, and we, we have to stay with God. We have to study, because it's so easy to get off track. It is so easy to get distracted. As soon as you, you start, you sit down to read the word of God, or just to, come, just to sit down and just quietly and, and just meditate on the word of God. If it's not the phone, it's the door. And if it's not that, it's something else. So I'm saying, you've got to make, you got to make time. If, if you don't, you'll never get around to doing it. It takes time. You, you got, sometimes you just got to sit down. You don't have to read. You don't have to say nothing. Just sit there and just concentrate on the Lord. Because there's so much going on now. So much is pulling for your attention. And sometimes I believe part of that is Satan's tactics, is Satan's way of trying to get you off course. He will try anything. If he knows that you want to study the Word of God, then he'll make sure he be in there to throw confusion or distraction or whatever in there. And the, the Israelites, they, they had just really gone ahead and started work. They had turned away from God. 
They refuse to turn back. And and it looks like all the things that God brought them to, you just thought they would have been different people. And people probably look at us and say all the things that he brought us to as a people, as a race, it looked like we would be different. But we're not. We are really a lot like the uh, Israelites. And we look back and think about, especially the older ones of us, we know we came from a long way. Now, some of the young ones never had it hard, so they don't know that it could be hard. But we need to teach them. They need to know. And just like the Israelites, you know, many of the the Israelites suffered because of choices. Um, Not not everyone in Israel worshipped the idols. Not everyone in Israel was against God. But... The ones that they looked up to, the leaders, the priests, the, the prophets, and they were not doing justice. They were just telling them what they wanted them to hear. They tell them that God told them this and God told them that, and they didn't. And nobody, there was no, no nobody was fighting for them, and and they just was bound. You see, but they didn't have the Bible in those days. They had the prophets that will come and tell us what God said. We can just open our Bible, one of them, because most of us got three or four anyway, open our Bibles and read. Sometimes you can't re- understand what you read. You yeah. get to the end. Yeah. You get, get to the end of the chapter, and you say, now what did that say? Uh, what? Well, you got to read it again and again. But at least you have that book there. You can refer to it and say, uh, uh, somebody come up and say something or somebody preach about something, you jot it down, you come home, you can look it up in your Bible and say, uh-huh, I've seen it. Uh, and that's what the Bible says. So what I'm saying, we got all this information right here at our fingertips. And if you, and if you don't feel like reading the Bible, you can just, well, you got it on your phone. You know, a lot of people have got it on where you can turn it on and you can hear uh, people like James Earl Jones, he would narrate the whole Bible. So I'm saying we have choices. We have opportunities where some things, the people in that day didn't have Bibles to read. But for us, but look at us, each one of us have got access to God's Word. I don't have to go through you and you don't have to go through me. And we don't have to go to a priest or a prophet or anybody. Yet we got our own Bible. And God is saying, it's like Zephaniah was telling the Israelites, so now you're going you gonna to pay for it, but it won't be permanent. That is not a, it's not permanent. God's uh, punishment is not permanent. He said he's taking away the judgment from the people. So he keeps giving Israel more and more chances. Well, he keeps giving us more and more chances also. So that that's uh, one of the things we have to think about as we read, as we read this lesson, and you know it's like we are looking in the mirror in certain in, to a certain point. It's like we're looking in the mirror because the same thing is happening with us now. All these years, we're we're doing just like they did. But we have to we have to ask God for discernment when we read. Say, Lord, show me, give me wisdom, give me understanding. And we want to be to a point that we we'll know the word just like anybody else knows. And we'll know when we're hearing the word of God and when we're hearing somebody else's word. And they want you to think it's the word of God. And God will give us wisdom. God will give us knowledge. And, 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 and God would, God would help us, help us grow because he would teach us as we go along, but we gotta, we gotta want to be, we got to want that. And you gotta want it well and, uh, hard enough, bad enough. You gotta want it so that you would be willing to put down some other things for the Word of God. Because you come in to read, you got to, now at times you got to turn off everything, the TV, the phone, and lock the door, whatever. And sometimes you just got to get by yourself. You got to talk to God for you. Because sometimes you won't know which way to go. And at that time, sometimes Satan conveniently sent along somebody to confuse you. So we know that uh, um, 
all these things that God has promised us, but it's not free. We have got to. We've got responsibility. We've got to do things right. We got to get it right for God. And we got, first of all, we got to want to do it. We got to want that connection with God. We got to be willing to give up a lot of things. And sometimes <clears throat> you wonder, you just look at somebody else over there doing their thing, look like they're being blessed. And here you are trying to live the life and you're having a hard time. But, but God got that in, He got that in control too. He knows when to unplug it. He know when to plug you up, he know when to unplug you. So we, we, we just keep on. It's hard for the saints of God, but we got each other. We, we, if we got each other, we gonna pray for each other, we gonna lift each other up. And, and then, and when the time, and when the time, the hardship, we'll be right there for the lift that person up. When our time comes, they'll be for us. This is what it's all about because you can't make this journey by yourself. And it gets harder, it seems like, every day. Something else come up. This comes up that you hadn't even thought about. And so we need to read the operation manual. And the operation manual, I call it the Word of God, the Bible. And we need to read His Word so we'll know His Word. And we can use His Word in time of need. Uh, you know, if you're going to walk with God, to walk with God, we must first talk with God. Are there any comments? Yes, ma'am. I want to thank God for you and thank God for that awesome lesson you just taught. And then the, the subject was refresh, just like I take myself for instance. I have been bad. You know, sometimes I have been bad, but what I need to, need to do is put that behind me. Don't go back and pick, pick it up. And then I ask God to help me start it fresh. Right. And go from there. And then just like fear, just like uh, if I go to uh, my daughter's house and I be mad with her, I'm going to do something to her. And I get there and they they, I'm going to do a, a plan on doing wrong to her. But then I look over there and see God got his arm, his protection around them. I can't do nothing, so I got to walk away and go on about my business. And, and another thing, we don't need to be fear. We don't need to be fear about anything. All we have to do, whatever kind of problems we got, is to turn it over to God, because God right there with you. He never leave you or even forsake you. So whatever kind of problem we got, we put it in God's hands. He going to take care of it. He ain't going to let no harm come to you. Amen. Amen. Are there any other comments? Yes, Sister Nancy. I got a lot out of the lesson, but what I really gathered from it was that we need to really be thankful that he decided to end the punishment and to restore us of what we had before we went off into that world of sin. That's right. He will restore us, but we got to want to be restored. We got to want him as much as he wants us. That's right. That's right. Yeah. See, we got the uh, we, we got the love. The you know we we need to be worshiping the giver and not the gifts. Mhm. Mhm. And then and then I learned that we should be praising him like when we celebrate a marriage, when we celebrate our, our team winning, when 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 your child graduates from school, the joy, the enthusiasm. The praise, the yelling, the, that's how we should be praising him at all times. Yes, uh-huh. And another thing, we have to praise him in the hard time as well as the good time. Yes. When, we, yes. when, we, when we're going through stuff, we got to praise him. We got to keep right on going. Because we know he's with us and we come out on the other side, we're going to be stronger, we're going to be wiser. And the song says, no cross, no crown. 
That's why I come out and say, we always say, we got to thank God for the bad, just like we do the good. That's right. Are there any other comments? Yeah. And you know, uh, the, the, subject, the rest of the day is a fresh start. When you give your life to Christ and, and stuff, you know, you got to have your heart set right if you're going to follow Christ and do the right thing and get out of sin and, and uh, be with God. So, you know, that tells us a whole lot right there, a fresh start. When you give your life to Christ, you're going to move in a different direction. Yeah, and, and uh, the fresh start could be, it doesn't have to be like people do the first of the year to make New Year's resolutions and we're going to yeah. start first. No, this is a different kind of fresh start. You may start this any time in the year. Mm-hmm. So that the moment that you come to Christ, you can start that fresh start then. That's right. right. And as you grow, as you start it, you realize then that, okay, and, and as you read the Bible, you know that you're going to have some problems. You know you're going to have some days that seem like to you going backwards. But these are things that Christians go through. And right. every, every day, you know, some days will be a big thing to go well. Everything will be nice. But as a Christian, one of the first things to learn is that you're going to have affliction. You're going to have problems. But you already know where you can turn to for help. Mm-hmm. That's the good thing about it. Yeah. Are there any other comments? Yes, uh, good morning. Um, for me, uh, talking about that fresh start, um, um, I always say we must be true to ourselves before we can be true to others. And if we're going to start a fresh start, then I think um, whether um, I got to all against my brother or sister and they know about it or even if they don't, I am at the point where if we don't um, get it right, you can't have a fresh start. Um, we need to, I, I'm at the point where some folk, uh, for me, they just, and even myself, if it's something, I, I hope I uh, uh, don't have um, anything that anyone, um, that have done something to anyone. If I do have, I want to get it right. But I, But let me know if I have offended you. But my point is, it's some things we need to uh, apologize, uh, get it right, and move forward. You cannot, for me, you cannot make that new start if you don't truly get it right, especially as uh, uh, if you say you're a child of God. I mean, I might not know that I have done you wrong. I mean, it's not that I've done you wrong, but if I have offended you, then let me know so I can get it right. That's the only way I can start that new fresh start. Because I, if I see you time and time again, especially if we are working together or we in church together and we mad and, and I don't even know why you're mad or, or whatever, how can we start fresh? We, we we have got to start living this thing. We we ain't perfect. We ain't going to get it right all the time. But let's go back and, and make the necessary corrections. That's why I come to used to have... Uh, 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 well, I guess they still use pencils in school. I can't use them on my job, but that's why they have erasers. But uh, you know, let's let's get it right. I mean, you know, we we just gotta that fresh start. We gotta get it right. Thank you. That's what I'm saying. We have um, we say we, you know, we come to Christ, and like I said, we're gonna stumble, we're gonna make mistakes, and all that stuff. But you ask God to. Creating you a clean heart and renew a right spirit in you. Right. So that you know, when you you can you can tell sometimes when you're wrong, and you yeah. say, "Well, <clears throat> you know, I I really," and and, and you got to get to a point where you can get stable. You get stable where you're not uh, here not one way one time and one way another time. And you know, you say you come to Christ, you want a new start, and all this stuff. And then, as soon as someone says something to you, you're ready to curse them out. Or you say some words that you know you ought not be saying. You got to get beyond that point. Uh-huh. And, and to, for sometimes people say, you know, and, and you're surprised that some of the stuff sometimes come out of some people's mouth. <clears throat> but, um, you get that and you ask God to help you every day. You don't try to do a long stretch. Just take it day by day. 
or <clears throat> morning to lunch time, whatever. Whatever needs to be done. What some people need, others don't. But what we're saying is that everybody got to walk this walk. That, I mean, it, there's no more time for, as I said once before, there's no more time for, like, getting wrong, getting ugly, and then trying to, then trying to clean it up. You may not have that much time. So the thing about it, <clears throat> when you know you make a fresh start, you do the best that you can. I mean, you be sincere and be honest. So God looks at the heart. We may look at the outside, but God is looking at the heart. The outside may look good. From the outward appearance, some people look like they really got it going on. But you just don't. That's right. And keep the heart pure because that's what these issues of life comes out of the heart. Uh Mm -hmm. And so this is what we're saying. Just like the Israelites, they just kept going. That's why they kept getting in trouble. They kept, as soon as they got up where they were halfway right, they, they just put it clean, Jordan. They just cut God out. I mean, they would go back every time. And we're like that, too, in many ways. Maybe individually, we're not, but as a whole, the whole human race is like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And another thing, Sister Nancy, we got to stop. If somebody's doing good in the church, we got to stop being jealous of that person. Still being jealous, we need to go to them and help them out the best we can. Yeah, because we need each other. That's right. Mm-hmm. Are there any other comments? I truly enjoyed the lesson. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. When we enjoy it, we all get something out of it. It's our Sunday school, and it's God's Word. Amen. And we are God's people. Amen. So when we come together to do our Sunday school lesson or whatever we're doing, it's for all of us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Are there any other comments? Thank you for that awesome lesson. Is my pastor there? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'm here. Okay. I'm here this morning. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. You got any comments, Pastor? No, I didn't have I didn't have a comment this morning. My wife uh she left me with the task of reading the uh the, the minutes. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, I truly enjoyed the, enjoyed the lesson today, and um, there was so much uh, good information that was given in there. And uh, I, I like what you say there about the um, the issues of the heart. There, we have to keep our heart uh, uh, clear, clear. We say we say mind clear, but our heart and mind clear. We have to stay focused on on Christ because truly, all the issues of the heart uh, that's. That's where we find the issues of life because yeah. if we, if, if it's inside us, because Jesus says it's not what goes in us that defiles us, it's what comes out of the heart. So right. again, we thank you and keep me for the lesson. Okay. Are there any other comments? If they're not, this concludes our Sunday school lesson for today. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Wooten, for that awesome lesson this morning. And I just ask in, from a, anyone from A-Church, what did they get out of the lesson? I know we done talked all over with everybody this morning about some parts of the lesson, but anybody else have any remarks about the lesson this morning or what they got out of the lesson this morning? I learned whatever problem, whatever kind of problem you got, send it over to God. And he'll take care of it because he owns it all, he knows it all, and he sees it all. Amen. 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 Now we'll hear from our city and secretary this morning. Good morning. And I am reading this uh, for uh, for Sister Lois. She had to step out. But um, today's lesson 
minutes for the St. Stephen's and the Anderson Chapel Church Sunday Church School for June 25th. Sunday School was called to order at 10 a.m. by Deacon Ritz. The opening song was Come By Here by Mother Barnes. Prayer was given by Reverend Faison. Lesson topic was a fresh start. Background scripture, Zephaniah 3, 14 through 20. Uh, the key verse, Zephaniah 3, 17. The Lord, the light in the midst of thee is mighty, and he will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love, and he will joy over thee with singing. Uh, a lesson was reviewed for 35 minutes by Trustee Wooten. Remarks were given by a representative from the class. Attendance in house 13, online 13 for a total of 26. Uh, the weather is warm. All the officers remain the same. Uh, City Secretary, Sister Lois Lewis. We thank you this morning for keeping the minutes for us this morning. Are there any corrections on the minutes this morning from anyone? If not, we'll receive the minutes as been read this morning. And we gonna just go out with the word amen this morning, because I know we're going into another service this morning. So we'll turn it over to Brother Lewis this morning. Thank you, Trustee Wooten, Brother Barnes, and uh Reverend Faison this morning for all that they did with the Sunday school lesson this morning. Thank you. Amen. 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 Good morning. We thank everyone for joining in Sunday school this morning. We thank you for your various parts that you have contributed to the Sunday school this morning. And God is good and greatly to be praised. Uh, yes, it is June the 25th. Uh, we are halfway through this year. Uh, the Lord has brought us thus far. We thank God for his grace and mercy. We're going to proceed forward with our devotion this morning. Uh, Deacon Hamilton is going to lead us with the song. Reverend 